This is a homemade ultrasonic cutter that works pretty good and is actually quite cheap. And I say pretty cheap because if you want to buy one, a commercial one, you will see that they cost a lot, more than $500. So I thought I should make a homemade one. Actually, my original plan is to make this handheld. So everything that I have inside of this case should be on a smaller case with this PCB and have it like this in your hand. But you will see in this video why this PCB is not working and that should be for a future version. Today, I want to show you this. But I don't only want to show you the ultrasonic cleaner. I also want to show you the process that I had to pass through in order to learn how they work. From ultrasonic teeth cleaners, how to get the high voltage and make the circuit, how to make a multi-vibrator with a comparator, the piezoelectric actuators and the horn, and how I've tried to make it handheld, but that didn't work, so it will be for a future project, and then how I ended up with this, and how this can cut with ultrasonic speeds. So you'll have a lot to learn in this video. That being said, let's get started. Get PCBs like these ones using the services of PCBWay with amazing quality and incredible prices. Just upload your Gerber files to their website pcbway.com. And have in mind you can select between several colors. Gold plated pads for better conductivity, different thicknesses and amount of layers up to 14 layers. I'm always satisfied with my orders and the excellent quality. And the order process takes only a few minutes and in just a few days I received my PCBs well packed. Now my projects are more professional and work a lot better, with less errors. Excellent tracks and good precision for the pads, the vias and the surface finish. So improve your projects by ordering your PCBs with PCBWay, starting from only $5. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is a normal cutter. I want to make it vibrate 40,000 times a second, so it would cut at ultrasonic speeds. My first idea was to use coil actuators. Just place the knife on top of it and move it with some sort of square wave signal. But you see, those simply could not reach high speeds, because they rely on mechanical springs. So the next approach is piezo actuators. Piezos can easily reach 40 kHz. But to move such a knife, we need very big piezos, not just some tiny ones as we had for our mist project. Those were powerful enough to vibrate water and create mist. But now we need a lot more power. My first idea was to go directly to use ultrasonic cleaners. Here I have my cleaner and let's see what we have inside. So we have the main driver PCB. And this here is a big piezo glued to the water bath. I've read online that you need to use some special glue made for ultrasonic vibrations. The size of this disc is huge compared with the one for the small mist generator piezos. But you see, the bad part about this specific piezo is its shape. As you can see it's just a disc and it will be very difficult to transfer the vibration to horizontal movement for the knife. Also the diameter is way too big. My idea is to use the piezos from those teeth cleaning tools. So I bought a very low power cleaner just to see what we have inside because usually that's how I learned about things. As you can see we have yet another controller PCB and this metal part. And this one has two piezo rings that are here glued between two metal blocks. And this metal part is called the horn and is the most important part for this project to work. Just as normal horns amplify the sounds, this one amplifies the piezo actuator vibrations. Because after all, it's just all waves. Kind of the same as when you talk inside of a horn. Ta -ta 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 -ta. It kind of amplifies, I mean, it not amplifies the power of my sound, but it redirects it and resonates into that direction, so it is a lot louder into that direction. The same with this horn. Instead of just amplifying waves of sound, it amplifies the vibration from the piezoelectric device. So the horn acts as a mechanical transformer, increasing the small amplitude of mechanical vibrations produced by the piezoelectric element to a level that is sufficient for effectively cutting. 
the design and the shape of this horn determines the amplification factor, or so called the gain. This one is enough for cleaning teeth, but we need a lot more power. So I've searched online for some other parts and for just $30, I found this one. This one has four piezos that are placed in series and also a long horn on the tip, so we can add a cutter blade. Now all we need is the 40 kHz signal, but it's not that easy, so for that we move to the other table. After some documentation, I found that we need at least 100 volts, and it must be AC, not only pulses. I mean, it needs to be both positive and negative polarity to get better results. Getting 40 kHz was very easy with an ESP32. But you see, to create a MOSFET bridge and create a double polarity, we need to control two transistors, one with 40 kHz signal and the other one with the same signal but inverted. Not just that, but the ESP32 works at 3.3 volts, so we need to also amplify those pulses. So believe it or not, I've made a PCB for this project. And on this PCB I've tried to use a MOSFET driver which already creates the inverted signal, so that was great. But we have a different problem. I wanted to use this type of coil in a center tap configuration with the middle pin connected to positive and the other two pins to a MOSFET connected to ground. And because we have no middle position for the MOSFET bridge, the driver can bootstrap and it doesn't work. And that's why my PCB was not working. So I had to think of another idea and I will have this PCB fixed for the next video. But anyway, I've made a multivibrator circuit using the CD4047. Using this and a potentiometer, we can adjust it to 40 kHz, as you can see on the scope. And that's the frequency where the piezo resonates, and we have it marked right here. The good part of using the CD4047 is that it already has an inverted output, and it's more, it could work directly with 12 volts so it's perfect for driving my MOSFETs or BJT transistors. So I've connected my circuit to the transformer and the transistors and now I have around 155 volts peak to peak AC signal of 40 kHz, as you can see right now on the scope. So I've connected my actuator. And it works, it can definitely vibrate but it's very low power. You can only hear it when you touch something hard like for example metal. I first thought that the actuator is the problem, I just thought I need a way bigger actuator. So I bought this other one, which is huge. This one is used for those 400 watts ultrasonic cleaners and it has a huge horn. I've connected it to my circuit, but still there is no powerful vibration. I've even tried to adjust the frequency to exactly hit the calibration point of the horn. So I've decided to check the signal on my commercial cleaner. And this is where I've learned something crucial, 100 volts that I thought was not enough. As you can see, this one generates around 800 volts peak to peak and it's a square wave, not just some peaks as in my signal from the transformer. So I had a different idea, we need more power. First I will learn more about this project and then make the PCB because it's very clearly my knowledge was not enough for making a handheld ultrasonic cutter yet. So I went on AliExpress and for $30 I bought this ultrasonic cleaner kit. It has the driver and a control PCB with some 7 segment displays and a bunch of buttons. But this one works at 220 volts AC, so I have to be very careful because it's dangerous. I connect power and connected my piezo actuator to the output. And now, wow, it works very well. Okay guys, this is the third time I'm making the test as you can see here, but the high voltage affects my focus and I've also added some tape here because I don't want to get chucked again. But you will see this is a 2mm more or less PLA, this was 3D printed and it should cut it like cutter. The only problem is that I don't have enough force to push because I have to 
uh, don't touch the bell, the horn. So I have to keep it from here. So let me just turn it on. You can hear there. As you can see, it is cutting like a hot knife. And there you have it. Queen cut. And just focus here. As you can see, it cuts like this were uh, uh, this was a hot knife, but it's not hot at all. Only with friction at 40 kilohertz. The horn that get, does get a bit uh, hot. The entire horn, actually a lot hot. I can't even touch it because it vibrates too much. But yeah, it works as an ultrasonic knife, more or less. I have to make an enclosure. I've seen that you can't use it for way too long because it gets a little bit hot. The horn itself gets hot and the blade as well and I even break a few blades. Maybe the power of this driver is too high for my actuator. So basically I have to engineer a circuit and a PCB to pass from this huge driver to a small one that could work with batteries and fit in my hand. But till then I will try to make an ultrasonic cutter because I already have the parts. The only difference is that this will be wired and not portable. I've designed an enclosure for the driver and another one for the actuator. There is something important for this actuator case. Because the actuator could only be held in place by this part here. We can't touch the piezos or the horn, because those need to be free in order to vibrate. So this small enclosure has a perfect shape to hold the actuator in place and make sure that the horn is in mid-air. I add two insertion nuts using the soldering iron. On one side of the case I add a push button and two wires. I also add some wires to the actuator. And I place everything inside and close the case with two screws. On the other side I get the driver PCB and screw it in place on the bottom part of the 3D case. On the back I add the power connector. I pass the wires from the ultrasonic actuator inside of the case and I've also placed them inside of a rubber tube. I solder the thin wires from the push button to this push button here on the PCB and that is the on and off of the 40 kHz signal. And the wires from the actuator to the driver output. And now I add the display PCB inside of the case and close it. And just like that I have a simple ultrasonic cutter. And compared with what I found online for $700 or $800, this was way cheaper. So guys, during the next weeks, I will study more how to generate 500 volts and 40 kHz signal and make the circuit as small as possible, so it could be a handheld cutter and redesign my PCB, so stay tuned for that. For now I have a simple ultrasonic cutter for those fine 3D printed parts, cutting small plastic components or to scrape the metal parts and clean them up, or who knows what other use I could find for it. You have all the details below on electrodes.com for free. So check my webpage and if you want to support my work, you have my Patreon page or maybe just give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it and the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below, uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts. All this kind of stuff will support my channel, so thank you very much once again.